everybody, and welcome to Chef AJ Live. I'm your host, Chef AJ, and this is where I introduce you to amazing people like you who are doing great things in the world that I think you should know about. We have a very special show for Christmas. Richard Hubbard, who just came out with a new book. We're going to link to it in the show notes and in the chat. And he has lost over 150 pounds and regained his health. And he's going to tell you about his plant-based journey. Please welcome Richard. That's congratulations on your book. Thank you so much. Hey, everybody. Um, I'm happy to be here on Christmas Day. I know not many of us can go out uh, this year as a different kind of Christmas, but uh, I figure I'd make the most of it and uh, you know, enjoy time with the small family you can have gathered. And uh, hopefully we'll get through this virus uh, you know, uh, next year. Well, you know, when you think about it, the statistic that only something like 2% or 3% of people that lose weight ever keep it off, and you've kept it off for eight years now, that in itself is a Christmas miracle. Oh, yeah. I, I never would have believed I would have kept it off um, because of all the dieting I've done over the years. Um, well, just so people know that we're not making this up, would you mind showing everyone your before picture? Sure. Uh, hopefully you can see this. You have to talk when you hold it for Zoom to work. <laughs> Yeah, hopefully you can see this. This is uh, me about maybe eight, nine years ago, probably nine years ago. And um, it was uh, quite a difference. Uh, a lot of people tell me uh, that knew me uh, for the past eight years that they can't believe I looked like that at one time. And um, for me, uh, I'm finally getting used to uh, my new self. And um, so it's not so much of a shock to see myself in the mirror, but uh, when I first lost the weight, it was like, who is that guy? <laughs> well, that's fantastic. So tell us your story. How did you end up like that before guy? And how did you end up like the after guy? Yes. Um, so uh, probably my obesity started after college. Um, uh, I am a graphic designer and web designer. So I, I tend to sit all day and um, I wasn't eating the best foods for many, many years. Um, I, I remember just uh, at work, everybody was kind of a, you know, a junkaholic. They all ate junk food, and and I, I was pressured a lot to eat a lot of the food, and I, I would overindulge all the time, and people would encourage me to eat more and more and more, and I wasn't getting up. Like I said, um, now I have a smartwatch. It reminds me to get up every hour, but back then, I, I would sit all day, and I was ruining my health by doing that. Uh, you know, I, I think nothing of eating a, a bag of candy, um, half a gallon of ice cream, and, and so many different foods. And looking back, I don't think I really enjoyed the food. I think it was more about um, depression and, and, you know, this, this life I was in that I just couldn't get out of. And um, so it was, it was a very depressing time, I think. Were you overweight as a child? And do you have family members that are overweight? Uh, I do have some family members that are overweight, but um, as a child, I would say I was um, not really obese, but I did have a, a slight belly, uh, which I wrote about in my book. Um, you know, I, I was uh, bullied occasionally um, on the schoolyard. Uh, uh, one bully would say, when am I going to have the baby? Because my belly was a little bit distended back then. Um, but, I mean, I don't think I was that heavy, but um, heavier than the other kids, I guess. Um, but the... Uh, Extreme obesity didn't start till after college. But like I said, I did have um, family members. Uh, some of them are obese. And uh, so it, it is in the genes, but it's also mostly has to do with diet, I think. Wow. Well, sometimes, you know, people sometimes log on a little bit after the show starts. So if you wouldn't mind, just show the picture again for people. Oh, I'd be happy just to. Yes. And make sure you're talking so it goes to you. Yeah. So this is me about um, nine years ago. Uh, let me bring close to the camera too. Um, and this is me now. Uh, it was uh, over 150 pounds. And um, I, I'm just uh, amazed as anybody else that I kept it off because um, I did do a lot of yo yo dieting over the years. Um, I was uh, just talking about my childhood. And um, I, I don't think I was uh, uh, obese as a child, but probably I would be considered overweight. And um, the extreme obesity didn't start till adulthood. But my food addictions, uh, they did start in my childhood. Um, although I have happy memories of my childhood, um, for example, I wrote about how um, I used to go trick or treating with my mom and sister when I was a kid. And we would walk for miles and miles and get the hugest bags of candy. 
Um, but I mean, I was overindulging then too. It wasn't the healthiest way to, to live, even though it was um, back then it was a happy time. But um, and the binge eating, um, you know, that runs in my family. My mom was a junk addict. Um, she's gotten much better since, but she she's been known to eat a, a you know a whole bag of potato chips in one sitting, and um, those were her downfall. She also got uh, type two diabetes. Uh, because of her eating habits, but has since uh, mostly reversed her um, diabetes as well. But, so anyway, um, I guess the bad habits started in, in childhood. Uh, when you're in college, when I was in college, uh, that's a different time. You know, you you have freedom, and um, you, you know you think you can, you can eat whatever you want because uh, you know you're young and you know you feel invincible. So I was eating um, you know large pizzas and um, I remember my roommate and I would grab uh, big bags of Doritos. We would eat the whole bag uh, walking to the subway. But the difference between college and um, my high school years and um, prior to that, I was finally doing a lot of exercise. Uh, I was doing strength training um, my freshman year. I was doing a lot of walking. I, I uh, went to school at Pratt Institute. So that's that's in uh, New York. and. Um, I love New York City. I still do today. Um, I did so much walking then that um, I was actually losing weight and I was at um, a normal weight. I remember my weight in college was 218 pounds. Now I'm six foot three. So that's uh, actually, that was a good way for me. Wow. Um, but uh, that, that was a happy time. But uh, like I said, I was eating a lot of junk food. I would go through my meal plan um, probably like a month or two within in the semester. So that shows you how much food I was eating. <laughs> so uh, what, what happened eight or nine years ago that made you take the weight off for good? Did something, was there yeah, a- um, I finally had my physical. Uh, I work for the state of Connecticut and they um, changed their insurance requirements. Looking back, I am so grateful they did. A lot of people would be, um, you know, um, they'd be angry that they have to do some work, you know, to to continue their insurance plans. And I was too at the time, I wasn't happy about it, but it was a true lifesaver for me because it got me into finally going to a doctor. I hadn't seen a doctor since my doctor retired. And this was probably when I was in um, college. So it was probably a good 10, 15 years before I went to a doctor. And um, when I saw him, I knew I was um, not in good shape. I, I was scared to death to go to the doctor. I had no idea what to expect. Um, in the back of my mind, I thought I had diabetes because I, I had neuropathy in my feet and I never went to the doctor to um, you know, check about that. And I remember, I wrote this uh, in my book. I remember a time where I, I would sit there at my job and not know where I was. Uh, my mom's a nurse and she thinks it's because I uh, had very um, low blood sugar at the time. And so here I was sitting here for probably 10 hours, not moving. And I was like, uh, it was a very scary moment. Where was I? This, this is probably um, nine, 10 years ago. Where was I? And I didn't know where I was. And I had um, neuropathy in my feet, very painful um, problems in my feet. And um, yeah, I had to wiggle them around to make the feeling go away. Sometimes it wouldn't go away for a while. And I, I was a mess. I, I um, had headaches. But I was not going to the doctor. It was, wasn't until that physical that really opened my eyes. What did the doctor say? Because I know that, you know, it's so interesting with doctors because some are very sensitive and some just blurted out. Like, what did right. he, he or she say to you? Yeah, he was very direct and it scared me to death. He said uh, I was morbidly obese. That, and that's a terrible word. Isn't it? <laughs> I, I was going to say, I, I wrote that in my book. I hate that term because it... Um, you know, it just sounds so scary to me, like um, like I'm going to die soon when you hear that. You know, it's just, it, it woke me up right away. You know, I, also, I, the other oh. thing that woke me up is he said that I have high blood pressure. Uh, I knew some kind of diagnosis was coming, either diabetes or something. I didn't know it would be blood pressure because um, they say blood pressure is a silent killer. You don't know you have it. But when I, I was doing my research, I found out that the headaches, they were probably from my um, blood pressure. 
because um, I was suffering from a lot of headaches over those years too. And um, after my um, blood pressure problems went away, my headaches went away. So I, I know that was attributed to that. Um, but anyway, so he told me I had high blood pressure. And he said, uh, come back in a couple weeks. And if it's still high, he's going to put me on meds. So I, I still didn't make a lot of changes at that point. Um, yeah, I was eating probably uh, somewhat less, but um, what really kicked me into gear was when I had my next appointment, and my, my blood pressure was still as high as it was. And he gave me the prescription. I filled the prescription and I, I called up my mom because like I said, she's a nurse and I, um, I um, told her I, I'm gonna be on a, a medication. And um, I don't know how I um, made the change myself because my mom actually, because she, she's always used to giving out meds you know, to, um, to her clients. So she says, well, everybody's on something. It's not a big deal. <laughs> you know, everybody she knows is on medication. But the thing with me is um, I did not want to be uh, dependent on meds for the rest of my life. I had um, family, um, everybody in my family was on meds. Uh, my mom, uh, my step, uh, my stepmom, she was on a lot of medication. My dad, he was on medication as well and um, painkillers and everything. And I did not want to go down that road. So um, I read the side effects and uh, that's, that's what did it for me. Wow. So, you know, you got to do something with, with, were you given any advice on what to do for diet or he just gave you the pills and said, lose weight? How did you? Yeah, I'm glad you asked that because uh, I, I laugh about it, uh, today, but he wanted me to join Weight Watchers. And the, the reason is funny to me is because um, I, I never knew um, I, I um, would take such an initiative. I didn't know I had such a drive within me to, to change. I, uh, when he said Weight Watchers, I thought, I want to do this on my own. Somehow I knew that um, Weight Watchers was a temporary thing. I had never lost a lot of weight before this. I was always on Emilio dieting. So I had no idea I would really lose the weight, but I wanted to do it on my own. I was already um, doing some research, um, what foods um, help you drop your blood pressure, for example. And uh, so I told the doctor, I, I called him and said, um, I, I really don't want to take meds. Um, do you mind if I uh, try to lose weight first and um, see what happens? So he gave me six months and said, if I, uh, if I um, my blood pressure, number one, if it comes down within six months, he won't push the medication anymore. And if my weight comes down, um, you know, you know, keep at it. So um, within six months, I was having dramatic weight loss. I was um, I was reading more and my, more about plant-based foods online. I, I discovered um, Dr. Furman at the time. I think I first learned of Dr. Furman in March or April of 2012. It was on a Dr. Oz episode. I happened to catch it that day. I don't know how I was so lucky to catch it, but that changed my life. He had um, uh, three, uh, three women on who lost, um, not only lost weight, but they reversed uh, health conditions. When, um, when I believe uh, reversed her diabetes, I don't remember all their conditions. When had um, psoriasis, uh, um, you know, and I had a skin condition like eczema too on my hands, by the way, that, that cleared up with plant base. But so um, hearing their stories, it wasn't just about the weight loss that they achieved, it was about health. So I made the connection. Oh my God, I, I could, um, you know, lose weight and get healthy, you know. And so from that point on, it wasn't about weight loss anymore. I was becoming obsessed with trying to find the right foods to eat and get healthy. So um, I, um, ever since the uh, episode in April of that year, I have been almost every single day having the G-bombs foods that Dr. Furman recommended. And for those who don't know, you probably all know is greens, beans, onions, mushrooms, berries, and seeds. Now, I, I do incorporate other foods as well, obviously. Um, you know, I follow Dr. Greg or two and other doctors. But for some reason, it's like an obsession with me. If I don't get at least the G-bombs during the day, I, I think I'm doing something wrong. So, 
Um, so that, that really was the beginning of my learning curve. I mean, I had a long way to go at that point, but um, it was Dr. Furman who opened my eyes. Does he know? Oh yeah, he knows. He wrote a, a forward in the book. Um, he knows my story. Um, he had me share it a few times. Uh, I recently did a seminar and he invited me on. Um, I, I'm very proud of, um, of what I learned from him. And um, yeah, he, he knows how, how grateful I am to him. So how easy or how hard was it when you switched your diet initially, even though you were highly motivated and you were yeah. under the threat of medication? I mean, you, you know, you were eating pizzas. Yeah, the, the thing is, uh, what surprised me, I, I know that food is very addictive, um, but for the most part, I think, um, I, I think I was really sick of being sick at that point. So it really wasn't tough when I gave up the, the foods I gave up. Maybe it's because I also went slower. Like I remember red meat was one of the first things I gave up. And that was because I read somewhere that it could you know, raise blood pressure. So I thought, oh, this will be easy. I'll give out the red meat. Um, aspartame, uh, you know, I did it um, maybe every couple of weeks I gave up something. Aspartame was the next. And when you give up aspartame, then you start reading the food labels and realize that, uh, you know, it's in so many things. And then you start reading other ingredients that you don't want in there. So eventually I, I um, was learning about oil. I was under the impression in 2012 that coconut oil is healthy. Because, uh, you know, it was around that time that you hear all these um, um, stories that, oh, coconut oil does this or that. And you think, oh, my God, it's so healthy. But so I was, um, you know, um, having a lot of oil still. But eventually, um, you know, Dr. Greger and other doctors came around, too. And I, I learned more and more about how oils are bad for you. So I cut those out as well. I think probably that was uh, the toughest for me because that, that took the longest to give up. The oils. Really? Yeah. That's interesting. Were you at the time when this happened, were you single? Were you married? Did you have a family? Did other people join you on your journey? Uh, I was single and um, uh, not really. Nobody, um, well, I should say I was in a challenge. Yeah, actually, other people did um, follow suit in the challenge. Uh, I did um, a wellness challenge that first year. And everybody in my team, um, we really pulled together and, and they all, I think, got motivated by me because they all had incredible results. The only thing is I'm the only one who kept that. <laughs> so uh, I don't know where I get my drive from because uh, nobody else I know has this drive in, in my family or, or friends. But, but uh, my mom, she did mostly become plant-based. I give her a lot of credit for that. Um, and she did reverse her diabetes for the most part. I say for the most part because sometimes it's occasionally, you know, higher than it should be. But but she is mostly plant based. Um, she's not as strict as I am. Um, my dad, he's he, he will never change. He's a complete meat and potatoes person. But some people you just can't reach. I never um, understand that when people say they'll never change. It's, exactly. I, I, I mean, just I keep trying and trying, but. Um, Never's a long time. <laughs> yeah, exactly. And I have um, a, a cousin um, who has uh, Crohn's disease, and she's uh, more plant-based as well. And I, I do give her ideas as well. And um, yeah, I, um, so th there are some people, and, and people have reached out to me on Facebook for advice, and they want to know how I do it. And um, you know, some people ask me to coach, so I am interested in coaching people as well. So. Just curious, Richard, the doctor that initially diagnosed you with high blood pressure, are, are you still his patient or has he seen your remarkable transformation? He, he did see my um, transformation and he was absolutely uh, amazed. He never, ever thought um, I would do it as far as I did, number one. And number two is he said that probably only 5% of people can keep the weight off um, after even a year. He, he can't believe that I, I, um, that I succeeded. He, he confided in me, he never thought I could do it. But he did, uh, since- But at least he didn't tell you that though. You know what, I'm glad- Oh, I, during I, the I, journey, yeah. You yeah, I mean, me. thank God for that, you know, because yeah, he didn't you imagine- he discourage me, which I am yeah, grateful for. I mean, but, but that is great. And you know, you need to please uh, apply for the National Weight Control Registry because they, they really need more men in there. And that's an organization 
for people. Oh, I never thought of that. Yeah, so please do, because I actually interviewed uh, Dr. James Hill for next year's Truth About Weight Loss Summit, and he's saying they need more men to apply because it, it, anybody that's lost 30 pounds and kept it off, they can verify it can be in it because they, they study us. Oh, they study us. Okay. They study us weirdos who actually kept it off because I'm at about eight years, eight or nine years now, too. So that's we're right. Sort of like, yeah, your story started around the same time yeah, as me. Yeah, but... 2011. It's, you know, I'm, I'll never, you know, it seems like everybody that is, has a has a pivotal moment like right. sometimes it's a health challenge in your case in my case you know just that somebody making a comment like if the vegan diet is so good why are you so fat and i'm like i don't know you know but i'd like to ask you uh, if you had a similar problem i did when i was losing the weight i would um i wrote about this in my book that i downplayed it i would always tell people um at first that oh, it was only 20 pounds and here i was like 50 60 pounds down and I never wanted to admit it until like uh, after the first year where it got to be ridiculous and I couldn't say it was 20 pounds anymore. Yeah. But I'm wondering, you, did you downplay it as well? Or? You know, Richard, I lost, I was hypothyroid at the time without medication and I lost it so much more slowly that I don't think, you know, I remember my husband didn't even notice until one day said, wow, that your hip's so bony. Oh, you lost weight. You know, really I did. It took me 27 months. So yeah. I, I, I don't know. And also, you know, I tend to always wear loose clothes, which, you know, maybe as an, a, a the rollover from being fat, but also when you're a chef, you know, you wear those chef pants. Well, that's the other thing. Yeah, I used yeah, to do that as that's well. That's the other thing. And so I still kind of do wear like leggings and I just, it's just so much more comfortable. It, it took me forever to um, buy new clothes. I remember a coworker saying to me, um, she thought maybe I was uh, a size smaller. <laughs> so then I thought, gee, maybe I should try some 34 pants and they fit. And um, I was uh, absolutely amazed. And then, um, Eventually, I, I'm size 32 now. You know, go figure. I came from 44 down to 32. Incredible. Please show your picture again, because as you know, with these live oh, broadcasts, would. people come in at different times. Sure. Yeah. You got to talk, though. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Th this is me about, um, I'd say it was uh, 2010 or 2011. And, you know, it's uh, amazing. You still had a smile on your face. <laughs> it's always smiling. That's amazing. Um, but anyway, um, you were talking about my doctor. I also want to mention how, um, yeah, he retired since then. And I got another doctor, but I, I decided um, this year, I finally want to see a plant-based doctor. So I am finally, um, I'm dropping my doctor. Not that I have anything against him, but I, um, my, my doctor didn't want to check, check like um, B12 or um, you know, D3. So I'm finally um, getting telemedicine and I'm getting my first primary uh, vegan doctor, which I'm looking forward to. I did the same thing this year. I did just, you really? I, 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 I gonna, he's, gonna, he's actually going to be on the show next week, Dr. Wayne Dysinger at Loma Linda. I'm lucky I'm 45 minutes away if I want to see him, but he also does telemedicine everywhere. Nice, it's such a nice. difference when, when you see a doctor that actually not only asks you about what you eat, but actually really cares about what you eat. And you know what did it for me? I mean... I, I don't have to hold it against him. He said to me at my last appointment, he said, you don't even eat fish or eggs. And I thought, yeah, well, he just don't get me. <laughs> so I thought it was time to move on. I just want somebody who, uh, you know, understands it. Of course. Well, we have some questions for you, if you don't sure. mind. Um, how long did Vegan Trucker Lady wants to know, how long did it take you to lose those over 150 pounds? Yeah, it took um, one year exactly to lose the first 120 pounds. And the next 30 pounds, I would say probably uh, the next, uh, I don't know, six months or so. It's the last uh, 30 are always the toughest. So I wasn't really focused at that point because I was really happy at 120 pounds. But I guess because um, I was eating so healthy that, um, you know, I eventually lost the rest of it. Nice. So I, I'd say within two years, I was at my ideal weight. That's wonderful. JL says, what things can you do now that your health has improved that you couldn't do before? Great question. Because uh, I didn't talk about my running. Um, I became part of a, um, a run club online. I don't know if, you're, um, if anybody's familiar with Josh Lajani. He's uh, somebody, who, um, a plant-based guy who lost a lot of weight. I think he lost 200 pounds. And he had a, a run club. He still does to this day. Uh, the Missing Chins Run Club. So I was invited in one day and there's uh, these incredible inspirational stories. Uh, all these guys um, lost, um, you know, 200 pounds, uh, 300 pounds. It was just incredible. But they all have um, two things in common. They were um, uh, plant-based and they were running. 
So I was already plant-based, but I wasn't um, a runner at that point. I did, did, um, I did a 5K, and, um, yeah, maybe a couple of 5Ks, you know, during the wellness challenges. But that was like three or four years prior to joining the run club. And um, here I am in uh, 2018. I did my first um, race ever, my first competitive race. And um, I did my first half marathon that year as well. And it was the most incredible feeling. And even to run a mile to me uh, amazed me because I was never able to run even <laughs> uh, the track in high school. I, I laugh about it now because the, the gym coach, he would say, well, that's it. The class is over, you know. I, I didn't complete the, the number of rounds he wanted me to do. And here I am doing a half marathon. It, it blew my mind I could do it. And um, I wanted to do um, the New York City Marathon last year. I was planning to do the, this program they had so that um, they, they usually have a lottery system, but they have this program where if you volunteer for certain things during the year, you can get in the um, race. But because of COVID, I, I wasn't able to do that. But I did do a virtual half marathon um, this past September. So I did my second one. Wait, what's a virtual marathon? You do it at home? I mean, I don't get you it. You do it um, and the streets of your okay. town. All right, it's, you not, it's not virtual. Like, I mean, you're actually running. Yeah, you're actually running um, just around town. You uh, record it with um, an app and um, everybody sees your results afterwards. So we're all competing in our own towns. And um, yeah, it's just an amazing feeling. I can't describe how amazing it feels to, to complete something like that. I don't care so much about the time because um, it's just uh, an accomplishment for me to get it done. So my goal is uh, for next year, I'm hoping I'll be able to do um, the full uh, New York Marathon. At least that's the goal anyway. So. That's great. Uh, Ford says, what were your addictions? Coffee, sugar, what was your biggest uh, problem? Interestingly, I was never a coffee fan. I could drink it, but um, I'm not one to, um, you know, take it or leave it, I guess, for coffee. Um, but the big thing for me was diet soda. I was one of those people who thought, hey, it's calorie free. <laughs> and I would drink it by uh, the, the two liter. I would probably have um, a couple liters, uh, you know, maybe two bottles of soda in a day. It was really sickening. And the funny thing is, I didn't like the taste of aspartame the first I remember when I was a kid trying it, and I thought, ew, it tastes like uh, chemicals or something. And it's a taste that I eventually grew to love, I guess, because I kept having it. And um, I, I was a big, big um, diet soda fan. Wow. Which, which flavor did you drink? It was uh, Diet Coke. Wow. Yeah. Do you think and you'd Diet like Spray, too. Do you think if you drank it today, you'd like it? Yeah, that's why I'm afraid of. That's why I completely avoid it. Um, I I don't um, believe in moderation. I like Dr. Greger's analogy. If you hit your shin once, it'll heal. If you keep hitting it, it's never going to heal. And that, that's the way I feel. And um, also, I became an ethical vegan um, since since going plant-based. So that is, has also helped me keep in check because I do not want to have anything with animal products. And it's, it's an obsession. If uh, something is in there, I have to know. So, so um, you know, it's, it's good for the animals and it's good for me. Yeah. You know, that's funny. I, I drink regular soda, which is like a, a lot more oh, calorie. Yeah. I mean, I love Coke Slurpees and regular Dr. Pepper. But uh, oh, yeah, I no. loved it as a kid until I made the shift to diet. But yeah, soda is a big addiction for everybody. Absolutely. And if people just got rid of liquid sodas, that would be did, well, not did that you give solid, it up so. around the same time? Or was uh, it no, let's years? see. I gave it up. I remember, oh boy, uh, 2003 for the last time. I mean, I, okay. yeah, I tried, you know, many yeah. times, but 2003, July 6th was my last Coke Slurpee and my last Dr. Pepper. I remember what, what did it for me. I was buying soda in a store. It was like, uh, they had a big sale on Diet Coke. And I, I was buying probably 10 bottles because it was <laughs> such a big sale. And the lady in back of me in the line, she says, you know, diet soda is not very, very good for you. It's, it's um, very bad for your body. So then that made me do research and I finally gave it up. 
So it's actually probably worse than the real thing. Exactly. Exactly. Yeah, all those so, uh, for all those people out there, I think that, you know, you may not change somebody, even in a grocery store, you can tell them, Hey, that doesn't look too good. Yeah. That's funny. Uh, let's see. There's a question from Monica. Does Richard eat any overt fats? And if you do, how much do you eat? Any what kind of fats? I'm sorry. You know, overt fats, meaning probably nuts, seeds, and avocado. Cause we know yes, you don't need do. oil. I, I remember when I had you on uh, my show that, we were talking about avocados and how men can probably get away with eating more than nuts and seeds and avocado, which I do think is true. Cause um, I mean, I don't try to overdo it, but I do have an addiction of peanut butter and almond butter and I do have them every day. But the thing is, um, I think it's because of my high metabolism as a runner. It, it just uh, doesn't cause me gain weight. That's great. Uh, Mandy says that uh, she's not being able to find your book available outside of U.S. residents. Is that true? It shouldn't be. Um, I know I set it up for uh, um, you know, other countries, but I'll, I'll have to check for her. Okay, thank you. Let's see. Uh, Colleen says, what uh, propelled you to write a book? Yeah, um, it was because I've gotten so many questions over the years. Um, first, how did I do the weight loss? Second was, why did I try plant-based and why did I go vegan? And after a while of hearing the question, uh, where do you get your protein from? It gets to the point where you just have to tell people, <laughs> um, you know, read it in the book <laughs> because uh, I, I found myself repeating myself over and over, you know, about these questions people have about um, becoming vegan. A lot of people still have fears about you know, will they uh, waste away to nothing? Or, you know, I, and I just wanted to share that it will be okay. I, I'm, I'm thriving this way. And um, I think it's important for people to know that, um, you know, you, you're not going to waste away at nothing. Everything has protein in it virtually. Um, some foods have more than others, but I, I'm, I'm building muscle as, um, as a vegan. Um, although I, I've been focusing on running lately, but I, I, I'm building muscle better than when I was um, having uh, lemon and animal products a few years before. So um, I, I don't see any reason not to go plant-based. And I, I wanted to write the book really a focus on that. Why, why, um, why is such an important thing to do? Uh, why, you know, why people should avoid keto and other diets out there and why, why people should put their health first. I wanted to share my story because um, a lot of people think uh, they need to lose weight and they don't focus on health. For years, that yo-yo dieting never worked for me because I was focusing only on the weight. And that, that I think is the wrong way to do it. Right. Alexi wants to know if you cook and what are the meals that you normally eat on a daily basis? Yeah, I'm, I'm really um, a simple guy when it comes to cooking. Um, I, one of my friends, uh, he's a fellow runner, Anthony Massio, you might know his name. He's another runner, a uh, vegan runner. Uh, he, he keeps it simple as well. Um, you know, I, I just um, throw things together. Um, I use um, maybe liquid coconut aminos or uh, amino acids, uh, liquid aminos to um, spice up the foods. But I eat a lot of salads and, and throw things together. I uh, pre-chop foods um, ahead of time. Um, but I, I like to keep things simple because I, I'm a busy person and, you know, you only have so much time. But I, I do do some cooking. Like uh, for Christmas, I, I uh, made some um, healthy uh, vegan cookies for uh, some people in my neighborhood because I want them to um, realize how delicious these foods are. So I made um, peanut butter oatmeal cookies and, um, you know, I, I, want, I want people to be amazed while you know, these are actually healthy. So and I got uh, rave, re rave reviews from them, so. That is great. Let me see if there's other questions for you. It's going really fast. So do you feel like uh, this is the last time you'll ever have to lose weight? Do you feel pretty confident? Yeah, yeah. after eight years, I, I think I'm pretty much safe. Um, in fact, uh, I used to use my fitness pal, you know, um, online, um, journal it keeps track of your food and that got to be an addic addictive thing because here I'm eating the same foods all the time and I'm not overdoing the calories so I completely gave up the my fitness pal 
because it, it really is uh, another obsession. It will remind you every day to log in and it keeps track of how many days you log in. And I got to a year and I thought, this is just another thing to, <laughs> uh, you know, I don't need the addiction. So I stopped calories at that point, counting calories. I didn't need to and nutrients. I just uh, go by how full I feel. So um, the, the nice thing about being plant-based, I'm sure you'll agree that you can eat um, as much greens as you want, fill yourself up and you're not going to ever gain weight from it. I, I fill up on the right foods, you know, the foods that are lower in calorie and I'm, I'm not going to, uh, you know, be hungry. Like, uh, you know, there's certain uh, snacks, like I'll have, have um, apples daily. Apples are a great way to keep your appetite in check. And um, just certain tricks I, um, you know, developed over the years to keep my appetite in check. So well, no, tell I'm, us, everybody no. wants the tricks. Is your dog trying to come in? Let him in. <laughs> uh, he's probably downstairs, though. Oh, okay. <laughs> he probably wants me to take him outside, but. Oh, yeah, we'd love to. Do you know Carol Kowanski? No, sounds familiar. But, she, uh, she followed Dr. Furman, too. I just interviewed her for my, my Feel Fabulous oh, yes, group yes, on Wednesday. Yes. Actually, she lost, we met. We met she lost 250 ago. pounds. And she said the same thing. Like she said, she eats like a five pound salad for lunch. It takes her like 90 minutes to eat. And that really is the secret, uh, filling up on those low calorically dense, but high nutrient dense foods. It's funny. She was speaking at the same event that um, myself and Anthony, who I just mentioned, the three of us were speaking at the same event and yeah, she has an amazing story as well. And I'm, I'm so proud of all my plant-based friends. You know, we all have a similar journey and it's just uh, an amazing to see. And I, I don't worry again about uh, gaining the weight because look at the company I, I, uh, I'm in. All these people, they, they've all kept it off all these years and nobody's putting it back on, oh, <laughs> and, and well, you well, included. Uh, well, there are a few, unfortunately. They have put oh, it back on. Some, so yeah. it's just that it's... It's devastating, I think, for people when they do. Well, I'd be, uh, I would be scared to death if I did. But I mean, I look in the mirror and I, I, I could tell I'm not gaining the weight. So and I go by how my clothes fit. Nice. I haven't weighed myself since I uh, stopped going to the gym because of the pandemic. Mm -hmm. So the last time I weighed myself, I was probably, I don't know, um, 198 or so. But I mean, the clothes still fit me the same. So in a you know, I don't see a bulge in my belly anymore, so I think I'm fine. <laughs> nice. Michelle says, uh, amazing weight loss. Love how he focuses on health. Dina says, do you talk in groups? Do you give talks? Yes. Uh, I, like I mentioned um, earlier, um, Dr. Furman invited me on. He, um, he had um, uh, a few seminars, and I, um, I spoke with them. And um, I'm, I'm always happy to share my story. I, I've done a few others, too. Um, I, I, I really want to get into coaching. I think that's my future. So I want to get maybe some kind of uh, degree in coaching. Uh, yes, I, I do. I do want to speak in more groups. That's great. Let's see. Here's just a comment from Bonnie. I've been plant-based since May. My husband and I have lost 35 pounds BMI now, 21 to 22. I'm almost to go away. People think we're off our rocker for our food choices. They all want our results, yep. but they all have excuses why they can't eat whole food plant-based. I know, yeah. I know. Exactly. Exactly. People think I was out of my mind. And I, I was actually um, afraid um, to tell people I was vegan at first because I knew the reaction I would get. And what's funny is uh, what got me to um, talk about it. Um, I don't know if anybody's familiar with Robert Cheek. He's a vegan bodybuilder. He I was selling a shirt that said no meat, no problem. And he had a 13-week um, journal um, uh, to, to um, you know, keep track of workouts. So I did a vegan challenge for 13 weeks. And um, I probably wore that shirt. And after that, I, I every time I go to the gym, I wear a vegan shirt because I want people to know. I want people to know that you can build muscle this way. And I, I want people to change their perception. So yeah, I know a lot of people still say that, uh, oh, how crazy it is. <laughs> they don't understand it. But I think, um, I do think the perception's changing. Yeah. Bonnie says, how do your joints feel? Did you notice a difference with weight loss? Yes, I did. Uh, I actually, um, I had knee problems. I had an um, a injury in my knee uh, in college. It was actually, a, I twisted it backwards somehow. And um, it healed. Um, 
but then over the years, I get knee pain and uh, different problems. And um, that I, um, I did have a problem last year where um, it started to swell because I think I was overdoing it. But the plant-based diet, the, the foods that I eat, I really think that um, it got the inflammation down um, rather quickly. I, um, after the swelling, I never had any knee pain. I still don't have any knee pain. I, I uh, had swelling um, a few weeks ago. That went away. The pain's gone. I don't have any joint problems at all. It is, and the neuropathy, everything, it's just an amazing thing how that goes away. So there's a question on how you got off the diet soda because it's so addictive. Yeah, that, that was a, uh, a challenge. I, I, I just say, uh, you know, um, I think it's because I, I did it slowly. Like I said, I gave up aspartame first. So, um, you know, maybe I would find substitutes. I, I don't remember what I did at the time. Maybe I had uh, more fruit juice or something, but, but uh, you got to find um, a substitute temporarily and while you wane off of that. Um, you know, some people can do a cold turkey, but uh, I, I, I wasn't a cold turkey. I, I had to find other, other things to substitute it with. But uh, I think if you stick with it, and um, I did drink a lot of water too, eventually you don't miss it. You can get flavored water and, and that's a, another amazing thing. Um, so just stick with it, that's my advice. Yep. And other than your mom, were you able to influence any other either immediate family members, friends, or coworkers to, to get go plant-based? Hey, Carol, uh, we speak of the devil. Carol's watching. Uh, Carol, hi, Carol. We, we're, we're just talking about you. <laughs> yes. I'm glad she could join us. Um, I, I'd say um, some friends, they, they, uh, they've, they've come on board. I've, I've met some amazing people. Um, uh, I do have some Facebook friends who got so inspired, they became plant-based as well. So, um, and I did have my cousin I mentioned, she had Crohn's disease and I, I believe she's uh, mostly plant-based. I, I don't know if I turned anybody 100% plant-based, but I definitely um, woke people up to um, have less meat. So if I could help, um, animals that way by having people consume less of it, I feel like I'm succeeding that way anyway. All right. So this next question, if you feel free not to answer, is last time I asked a guest on this, they got really upset that a lady would like to know if you're single. I am, yes. The, the reason I, I am very picky because I want to make sure uh, that she's vegan <laughs> because th that to me, it never was an issue, but being an ethical vegan, um, I think it'd be ridiculous to, to be with somebody who's not. Yeah, I know that's going to be hard because a lot of people married someone and then they changed and the other person won't. And that's your husband's be... a vegan, right? Absolutely. That was a thing. Yeah, when I even when I was dating, I mean, it, yes, because I just I, I saw the difficulties people had in mixed marriages. It's just especially as an ethical vegan, you don't want to be around people eating dead animals. Exactly, like, exactly, exactly. Yeah. So that was a, that was a non-negotiable. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Um, Mandy says, I hope he finds the perfect vegan partner. Well, you know, I've had this lady on the show twice. She's called vegan Cupid and she has a vegan matchmaking service. So uh, yeah, I'll check it out for sure. Yeah. Tell her, tell her AJ sent you, you never I know. Will, or, may, or maybe any ladies watching now, just uh, send me your photo and I'll forward them on to Richard. <laughs> sure. <and> we'll see. <laughs> That's hilarious. That's so cool. Do, I, are you in the same profession as when you lost your weight? Are you at the same job? Yes. So yeah, these people um, had to I'm have a noticed. Webmaster and I, I work at a local community college. And uh, yes, that, that's part of my journey because um, the interesting thing is that staircase, when I did the interview, I, I was so out of breath going up that staircase. They had this huge staircase. And I, I remember being so out of breath rushing to the interview. I was all sweaty and I was so out of shape. So I think of that job as the beginning of my journey almost. Any of the same co-workers? Yes. Well, yeah, they had I, to have noticed your weight loss, right? Yeah, that, that was so hard that um, when I first started to lose the weight because, you know, like I was telling you, I was downplaying and people were wondering what was going on. <laughs> and I said, oh, it's nothing, it's only a couple pounds. And and I really didn't like the attention. But, um, oh, that's interesting. You know, eventually I, you got to own up to it, I guess. <laughs> That's funny. Mandy says, do you have a standing desk to help with being sedentary all day? 
No, but um, my Apple Watch reminds me to stand every hour, so I, I'm good, and I do, I do get a lot of exercise. So that's great. You guys, have any more questions for Richard? So that is so cool. Uh, congratulations on the book. It's available right now in Kindle and in hardcover, right? Yes, and I also have an Audible book. Um, they haven't put it up there yet. I guess it takes uh, like 30 days or so. So you can also look for that. But um, I, I just hope people will check it out and maybe give it as a gift to somebody who's on the fence of maybe thinking of going plant-based because you know it can be done. And there's not just my story. There's so many stories out there, people who succeed with this. I know that's amazing. Oh, here, Carol wanted to know how I actually, I told Carol she should write a book the other day. So she's asking, how long did it take you to write the book? Oh, it took forever, actually. I, I got to give credit uh, to you. Um, Robert Cheek, I told him the other day, I emailed him, we're friends. I told him, I don't know how you writers do it. Um, you know, it took, I, I looked at the date of when I started. It was December of 2018. I looked at the file, the creation date. And, um, you know, I, I work full, you know, full-time jobs here and there, and I'm, I'm just always busy. So I guess the pandemic was a blessing in a way because I had a little more time to write the book, but it takes a lot of time. But Carol, I, I hope you do write a book because, uh, you know, she has an amazing story as well. It's worth the effort, I think. Yeah, I agree. It does take a long time to write a book. But I don't know these people that are pumping them out every every year. It's unbelievable. So you, you, uh, uh, how many have you had now? I've, I've done, well, three and a half. I mean, an e book. So like basically four. One's not out yet, but it takes a long time, it does. especially it really with does. recipes. Oh my god, yeah. people don't realize. So there's a question from Mandy. What do you do if the weight slows down? The weight loss slows down. Yeah, that, that's a good question because um. After the first year, I told you it was uh, 120 pounds down. Uh, for me, um, I wasn't obsessed about getting to the last 30. I mean, it eventually came, but it does slow down. I think you, you just have to uh, keep at it. Um, for me, it probably took another six months. I don't even know how long to get that uh, other 30, but um, I think if you just keep at it and stay active, it, it will come off eventually. It's just... For some reason, I've heard that from other people too. The last 20, 30 pounds are the toughest. I think that's the same for everybody. Do you eat the same now as you did losing or did you did you become no. more flexible or less flexible? I, that's a very good question. Um, in 2012, I um, was probably 70 to 80% plant-based. I still had um, turkey um, and like, uh, you know, yogurt. And it took a couple of years. It took until uh, actually I found Robert Cheek's bodybuilding book to become 100% vegan. But I gave up those foods. But um, yeah, uh, yeah, my my eating is probably the same as it was in you know 2016, 2017. Because I do try to eat you know just veggies, grains, uh, fruit. Um, you know th those basic foods. You know variety within them, but yeah, I think uh, for the past three years, it's been basically the same. Do you do three meals a day or do you do the intermittent fasting like so many people do these days? I, I do. Um, what I do is, uh, I guess, it's sort of an intermittent fasting because um, uh, I don't eat until around um, noontime. And uh, I try to not eat after uh, eight or nine. But um, yeah, I guess you call that intermittent fasting, but it's just the way my day is. I'm not intentionally fasting, but. Yeah, overnight and not eating, obviously. So, but no, there's no intentional fasting. Cool. Any recipes in your book? No, just I do uh, write about my eating plan, though, with the foods I eat daily, which uh, was like I said, I'm a simple guy, I kind of throw things together and, uh, you know, make it taste good. But, uh, but you can see the foods I eat anyway. Do you do any, do you, do you use an instant pot? Yes, I do. I, I make lentils in there. Um, that's a newfound favorite food from a couple of years ago. Um, high in protein. I love lentils. I, I um, get creative with the spices. Uh, I think that's the key also with the plant-based foods. Experiment with spices. You'll find out so many foods you love with the spices. Are you strict on the SOS? Um, yes. Um, you know, I'm, I'm like... Um, 
Yeah, a few friends of mine, maybe they'll cheat once a month and have like something with oil or sugar. But it, like I said, I'm an ethical vegan, so I can't have animal products. But if there's a little bit of oil, maybe once a month or something, you know, somebody has a, a vegan cookie that they made me or something, I'll, I'll eat it. But um, yeah, as long as it's not a habit, you know, I, I'm okay with it. That's great. Well, let's see. Oh, Wanda says, did your skin get loose when you lost that much weight? Yes, it did. Uh, I did write about this in my book. It, it took um, a lot of soul searching for me, but I did finally have a, a tummy tuck in 2018. The reason it was uh, hard for me is because I lost this weight on my own. And I, I, didn't, I almost felt like it was um, cheating at first, but then I was so embarrassed of my loose skin. And at the gym, I would have my uh, skin showing if my shirt rode up and um, I wasn't feeling good about myself with the, the flapping sounds, kind of embarrassing when I run and you hear these the flapping sounds, the belly, I, I just, I hated it. I was, uh, it was just something that I felt I had to go. So was I was- it, Wow, was, I, was it very painful? I've known two women that did it and they said it really hurt. Um, it, it, well, I have to be honest, uh, the, the thing that hurt the most, I think, were the drains. Oh. They do do um, drainless tummy tucks as well, but those, um, those it depends on the amount of skin. I had so much skin that they couldn't use the, they had to have the drains there. But the drains, they, they burn your skin when you move around sometimes. And that was the most um, painful part. I'm so sorry. But, um, other than that, if, if, as long as it wasn't touching me, the, the drain, everything felt kind of numb and it wasn't really painful. Wow. But the, how, how, did they, did they weigh the skin afterwards? Like how, cause I, there's a show where they do this. Do you know how many pounds of um, actual skin? I there wish was? he did. He did show me a picture. Um, I'll have to show you. Maybe I'll put it in the show notes. There, he sent me a picture that was like, I don't know, 18 inches long or something. It was that's, huge. That's crazy. And, um, so that's where you had most of your loose skin was belly, not arms, legs. Belly, or, yeah. I wow. did have it um, in my arms and, um, you know, my neck and other places, but I did so much um, strength training uh, that I think it hid a lot in my arms. Thank God. Cause you know, at the beginning it was hanging down, but the muscle um, disguised it. But there, you can't, I can't build, at least I can anyway, I can't build that much muscle in my abs so that it hides all the skin. So I saved for five years for that tummy tuck. So I, I, um, I, at first I was kind of ashamed. I didn't want to tell people, but it's, it's part of my journey. I feel There's nothing to be ashamed about. You're not, I mean, it's, I mean, well, I just felt like I was cheating myself because I didn't have surgery for the weight loss, but oh, you know, no. I realized, you know, it's, it's part of the journey. No, and you know, a lot of times when people don't have the skin thing, they, they get infections and stuff because the little folds, you know, that gets, I've heard, you know, gets sweaty and stuff. So, right. And I, yeah. I do wish, um, I, I appreciate that question because I wish people would talk about loose skin more with weight loss because I never gave it a thought when I was losing the weight. And I, I always thought, um, you know, the belly would go away as I was losing more weight. And um, eventually you realize that that's just skin. And, Everything I was doing, all the strength training, I would have my body fat check thinking that um, maybe there's still fat in there and that's why it wouldn't tighten. But nothing, nothing was working to get that uh, tighter. So um, I, I'd say if uh, anybody listening out there, if, if you wait a certain amount of time and it's not going anywhere, um, just go for it if it bothers you. Wow. That's and I, I, I never had um, pain since, you know, the first couple of weeks, like I said, with the drains were uncomfortable, but the scary thing for me was uh, the anesthesia, believe it or not, because I hadn't had the anesthesia since I was five, having my tonsils out. So I was obsessed with what's going to happen. You know, I worry about, you know, being yeah. under it, but what got me through it, I found an article online and, uh, you know, it talked about you have more, more of a chance of dying in a plane crash than you do um, anesthesia. So that, that kind of made me feel better about it. So 
and I got oh. through it, obviously. So <laughs> that's great. Well, that's my biggest fear is anesthesia. That oh, they'll, you too, they'll, yeah. yeah, they'll think that I'm asleep, um, but I really won't be, and that I'll feel everything. And that's why I'm just so afraid. But good for yeah, you. It is a scary it. thing, but I, I got through it, and I, I didn't feel it. Thank God. <laughs> well, you're brave. Wow. How long did you have to keep the drains in? Um, that that drove me crazy because um, it, it would seem like forever. Uh, if there was the thing when you when you have tummy tucks, it, it um, you have to um, pour it out every day. It's kind of disgusting the mm. liquid that comes out. And um, the left side, I remember that that um, came out after a week. For some reason, there wasn't as much um, fluid on that side, but the other side just kept going and going and going. And I even had um, an infection develop on that side. I just saw this now, you know, I actually forgot about it then. Um, two weeks into it, I had an infection and they, um, I had a big bulge, this uh, big red um, bulge there. And um, he gave me a strong antibiotic, I think it was Cipro. And I was so sick with the Cipro that um, I, I got pain in my arm. It caused, uh, that's one of the side effects. So thankfully, uh, the antibiotic did its trick and I got to go off the antibiotic early. The infection went away. And about a week after that, the drain finally popped out and I was good after that. Nothing, wow. no issues after that. Wow, that's incredible. So no regrets. <laughs> Yeah, no, good for you. Well, now you can't gain it back because you got the other surgery for God's sake. Yeah, shakes. that's another good point. <laughs> I don't want to waste money doing that. Uh, yeah. No, if for no other reasons than pure frugality. <laughs> right. well, <laughs> this is great. Have you already had your Christmas dinner tonight? No, I still got to do that. Well, what are you going to have? Um, uh, I have some steamed broccoli uh, ready to go, maybe some um, um, cauliflower um, salad, of course. Got to have my salad. Uh, I do have some almond butter. Uh, I'll probably have a, an apple after this because I'm getting a little hungry. So, yeah, and people are like, "That's Christmas," but they don't realize it. You know, you actually learn to enjoy eating simply after a while. Oh yeah, exactly, exactly. You know, I'm not yeah. having Christmas ham like other people. I'd much rather eat this way. You know, well, I've gone a little crazy. I made mashed potatoes and cranberry sauce for tonight. Oh, that sounds good though. Yeah, but I got to take a walk just to burn off my big lunch salad I, that's when I, my <laughs> yeah, biggest meal is I so much I mean every day you know what I, you know what I love about calorie density like because this is Christmas it's like every day is Christmas because I never I just can't believe how much I eat and I eat so much more now as a slender yeah, person exactly. than I ever ate when I was obese and, exactly. and it's like it's like how do I eat this much but it's it's like you know it's yeah, amazing being a food addict is it's amazing how much uh, food I'm able to eat you know, this know. way I don't want to feel hungry. Constantly. It's the best. It's the only way I know to, to, to not feel hungry is to employ the principles of Absolutely. calorie density. Absolutely. Yeah. Oh, Karen had mama says for Christmas. That's a great idea. I hope you're feeling better, Karen. Well, thank you for writing this book. I, I'm in the, I hope people will check it out and it's on Kindle and it's also going to hard copy and it's got a great photo at the front of the book. So that I, if you missed it, I hope people get a lot out of it as well. I, I hope, um, you know, I hope I can, um, inspire some people to go plant-based and vegan you know our, our planet definitely needs it we don't want another pandemic either <laughs> so yeah. you bet well thank you so much merry christmas richard merry christmas everyone if you don't yeah, stay christmas. safe everybody yep happy kwanzaa happy hanukkah happy new year and we have another show tomorrow at 11 we're doing a lot of cooking for the holiday season so you can learn to eat healthy we have vicky coming back from Michigan and she's going to do plant-based burgers three ways. What's your favorite food, Richard? What's your favorite meal? Um, honestly, I, I discovered I love lentils because they're so filling and I um, add so many um, amazing spices to it. It's, it's one of my favorites. Nice. Great. So check out Richard's book and be inspired. All right. Take care, everybody. Thanks so much, Richard. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.